But I want you to go to Psalm 91 with me, please. You know, I committed years ago that I would, I would do what the Lord told me to do. Like Jesus, I said, I will say it, I will do it. And you know, pastor in a church, it's one of the greatest honors of my life, especially people like this. I, you know, many have told me over the years, I'm just not your conventional pastor. But I don't know what that is. I, we've never been in the end times before. So I don't know what a pastor looks like in the end times. You know, I don't know what a pastor looks like in more times, but I would say that a pastor that's in more time is differ, different than what a pastor would be in peacetime. How many people would accept that? So I'm kind of done with people saying, you're just not the regular type of pastor. You know, I'm done with people trying to tell me what they think I am. I'm just a simple man who fell in love with Jesus Christ, who accepted a call on my life, and the call demanded for it to be this. It wasn't just a ministry. Even though within this, it houses, encapsulates a ministry. But even within a church, within a hub, there's ministry. Yes. To say that thing is a ministry or a thing is a church, we're not in that day. Because there's such ministry that has to happen even within the church. I think we came through a massive era of para ministries. But I've been saying for years that I believe that we're in the day of the local church. And I believe that there are great bastions that God is trying to raise up with local believers, with believers that come from different places. So that something can be created, a stronghold, a strong tower can be created that people can run into and they are safe. We may not be known for our faith. We may not be known for our wealth. We may not be known for many things, but some of the things that we are known for is love. Some of the things that we are known for is strength. And the ultimate of what we're known for is prayer. And to have this prayer in a local work it's a phenomenon. It's not the norm. Now, there are a lot of places that have strong prayer, but this work, it's the most amazing thing. When people come here, when people visit here, when ministers come here, they're astounded and in awe. Sometimes people think it's just on what I carry. Yes, I carry a certain But it's all of us that have come together to carry a supply, to bring our lives to this thing that makes it work. That is the secret sauce. How many people understand this? Now, I don't know how long it takes for something to be done. But when I was driving through Tulsa yesterday, this is not nearly over. And it looks to me that we have a bit to go. Yes. How many people understand that? Yes. If the rapture happens tomorrow, I will be the most surprised. Yes. I know there's a lot of people think it's going to happen. I will be, my, even my daughter said to me last night, dad, do you think it's going to happen tomorrow? And I said, well, I said, me, no one can tell the time, but if you were asking me as your dad, I don't think the rapture's coming Monday. And if it is Monday, there will be no one here to persecute me after it. <laughs> so I can say, I think it's not coming. And if it does come in, it will praise the Lord. Amen. Nobody will remember. <laughs> but if I say it is coming and we're still here, then what happens to you? The credibility. So many people want so many people to say something. And in these 12 years of being here, pastoring this work, growing it from the grass up, soil up, we have been pushed and prodded and persecuted. 
say something, say something. Even when COVID happened, we started the community page. You remember that? I refused to be foghorn, leghorn. I refuse to get out there. Well, you know what? Somebody said to me recently, you know, you really just have to get your ministry, you know, on the cutting edge. This was, somebody said this to me recently. You really just need to get it on the cutting edge and say something that will get people's attention. And I'm like, I don't want to get people's attention for the wrong things. There's too much of that going on. There's too much pop-up prophetic. There's too much of it, guys. There's just too much of it, and I'm all in there. I don't despise it, but there's too much of it. There's too many people looking for the circus. There's too many people looking for entertainment and and satisfaction and gratification. And I'm telling you, Satan is going to wipe the floor with you because even the rapture is not going to be as good as what you think it's going to be. Well, unless the rapture is the greatest show on earth, baby, I'm telling you, I don't know. It's going to be over before you can even blink. Oh, my God, I have such fire in my belly. Oh, man, sola solar man. Maybe you don't like having a pastor. You see, it'd be okay if I was a conference speaker. It'd be okay if I just had a minister. It'd be okay if I just go and be an apostle somewhere or a, or a prophet somewhere. And I could, I could have all the fire that I wanted. And, and you know what? Everybody from every church would enjoy the fire of that traveling minister. But that's not what the Lord has asked me to do. The word of the Lord was, I want you to work at the well in the city. And for 12 years before that, we have worked at the well in the city. But I'm telling you, there's something in me. There is a fire and a faith that something is bubbling beneath the ground in the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, I know there's a lot of things that are shaking, but I can tell you who's shaking in his boots right now. The devil is shaking in his boots right now because he didn't want you. Amen. He didn't want you to find me. He didn't want me to find you. He didn't want us to find each other. He didn't want you to come from Australia. He didn't want um, the the prize to take us into their guest house. He didn't want us to be here. But I'm telling you, 12 years later, praise the Lord. Amen. We are here. Amen. And I'm telling you, the stake in the ground is getting stronger and the cords are lengthening in the name of Jesus. I declare it over this place. We are getting stronger and stronger, stronger and stronger. I had a minister say to me, I don't know why people go to millennial. A minister in this city. I don't know why people go there. It was because some had come from his church to here. And they came here because of what's happening. I can't do anything about that. I said to the Lord all those years ago, Lord, you know, it was lovely. And I said, Lord, I want fresh fish. I want to gut them myself. I want to haul the nets. And the Lord said, you will take who I send you. For this is not a conventional work. This is a work for the end. And I have trained people up in other fields to come to this field for the end time. See, when you just think little church, when you just think little church, when you just think little church and pastor, steeple and people, you will miss what's happening right now. This is not about steeple and people in a little church singing kumbaya on the corner, amen, and just, you know, just slapping ourselves silly until we have an epileptic fit with the excitement at the altar. This is about training up a people. They've told us for years, we are not gathering an audience. We are an ass- assembling an army. And assembling an army takes a little work. Do you think it's easy coming in here week in, week out? Do you think it's easy for the leaders to come in here week out, week out? Do you think it's easy for people that pray and lead prayer to come in every prayer meeting, leading in, leading night, leading in, leading night, being the cheerleader, stirring it up, tur- stirring it up, stirring it up, stirring it up? I'm telling you, after five years, I can get a little slack. After 10 years, that can get a little slow. After 12 years, that can feel just a little old. But I'm telling you, every time you go to the 
the Father. Every time you go before the throne of grace, he gives you what you need. In the name of Jesus, he gives you what you need. Lift your hands and shout it out. He gives me what I need. Tulsa doesn't need another steeple and with the more another few people. It doesn't need just another. Oh, I'm telling you, isn't it the greatest children's work you ever seen? Oh, my God, the greatest worship you've ever heard. I'm telling you, there are people that croak like frogs, and they get more attention of Jesus than some of the sweetest voices. Amen. It's not what's coming out of your throat. It's what's coming out of your heart. Amen. Don't mind me. I just came to preach myself happy in the name of Jesus. There is a well in the city. Well, I've lived in Tulsa all my life. My God, I've never heard about a well. I mean, what well is he talking about? My God, that's what's wrong with that man. Doesn't make sense. Nothing's marketable. I didn't come here to be marketable. If I was looking to have been successful in my own right, I would not have done what I, I did. And you have to understand that once and for all. I did not come here for position and prestige. George Washington, and I do not put myself in his shoes, he did not do what he did for position and prestige. He did it because there was a cause, a cause of something greater for everybody, not just himself. And for us to win, we have to get up higher than me. We have to get up higher. Well, my God, do you see the way that, do you see the way that Jeremy just dances around pastor? Well, it's none of your business. Are you dancing around me because you want to or because you're being made to? He's not dancing around me. He's called of God. He's here for a purpose, positioned and postured for such a time as this. Lift your hands and shout it out. I am here for a purpose. I am here because of what is happening. It is greater than Jeremy. It is greater than Joel. It is greater than you. It is greater than me. I want you to shut it out. Something greater is happening. Do you think this man took on the office of senator so that he could just get initials, titles? Have we any idea what he faces on a daily basis? Have you any idea what some of these precious people that have put their lives on the line for that face on a daily basis? We've no idea. Have we any idea what it is for someone to open their mouth and say something that people will not agree with even though it's right? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to stick your neck out over the line? You say, well, we come to millennial. I guess we have. It's a well-documented fact. We don't stand for nonsense here. People say, oh, the road's too narrow, millennial. Do you, know, do you know the beauty about a road being narrow? Is it gives the enemy less turf to maneuver on. When you're in a place and it's just a big old broad road just for everybody and anybody can do anything that they want to want. I'm telling you, evil works will be there. The devil will be running all over the place. When you get leaders who narrow the road right down and they say, we're in this for no compromise, get his book. Get Pastor Chris's book. What you compromise to keep, you will eventually lose. Well, I didn't come to Tulsa, Oklahoma to lose anything. We came to gain the greater thing. I said we came to gain the greater thing. I'm going to say it again. We came to gain the greater thing. So what we have to do, guys, is we have to keep our eyes on the greater goal, on the greater that's why I don't understand, Paul Brady. You will never understand me. That's like saying, I don't understand the Lord. I don't understand, you know, I don't, under, I don't put myself in his category, but it's the same principle what I'm talking about. I mean, just when you think you're going to take the city, he gives up his life. It didn't go the way that people thought it would go. <laughs> 
There's an awakening coming, and I'm t- coming, coming. There's an awakening coming, and it's not going to be the way everybody thought it was going to be. Everybody thought it was just going to move a God. We were going to have Holy Ghost meetings, and I'm telling you, you know what? People just followed in the Holy Ghost. But this move of God is going to be completely different. How many people understand that wave at me right now? So even if you snook in here and you just say, well, I'm just a regular church, folks, you're not. The very fact that you snook in here is a sign to you that you're supposed to be here. In the name of Jesus, there are many people. Do you know how many people tell us that they watch this online? They watch it online. Some people up to a year before they came here. I mean, that's nervous. That, that's nervous anxiety that you have to watch a church for a year before you go there. I was speaking to someone recently. They said, I would love to go to Millennial, but I'm telling you, I can't go. My church doesn't allow me to go there. My church doesn't allow me to go anywhere, actually. And I said, how sad. How sad. How sad. Because I believe that this move of God is for everybody. And I don't believe that one person is going to have the monopoly. I don't believe that one work is going to have monopoly. But every work has an assignment. And we have to work at the assignment that God has given us. You know, for years, you know, I tell, I wish I could preach like Andrew Womack. I wish I could teach, you know, like Bob Yandian. I wish I, I wish I could teach like Pastor Rick. But they do what they do. And I do what I do. And I was talking to the Lord about this this morning, even when I was getting ready. Don't let your mind go there. I mean, just getting ready. I was talking to the Lord about this. And, and again, the Lord said, you go out there and you be who I have created you to be. And you bring what I tell you to bring. And you stir up that people in the name of Jesus. And you command the enemy to leave of anything that he is trying to do of people's homes and families in the name of Jesus. Your businesses are going to make it. Your children are going to make it in the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, whether they know that there's an awakening coming, they are going to be involved in it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Why? Because God is not going to allow your prayers to remain fruitless. So these things have been coming to me like a freight train, ladies and gentlemen. It's the most amazing thing. Shut it out. I'm going to make it. Come on one more time. I'm going to make it. In Psalm 91, verse 1, just give me a few minutes. This could be a quick service. YouTube is full of so many voices you don't know which one to listen to next. And sometimes you just have to turn it all off. Well, we have to stay informed. There's informed and then there's nothing nothing productive about your life because all you do in your life is just spend your life listening to what everybody's saying. And the Lord has ministered to me is that what the enemy is trying to do with all this is to bring people into a place of faithlessness with no fruit, with no productivity, hearing everything, knowing supposedly everything, but no fruit. Well informed, but nothing performed. You can go on your phone, you can go on your device. You can go on YouTube and you can, you can get the statistics on your own personal phone how much you watched on YouTube per week. For some people, it will be staggering. It depends what you use it for. Facebook will tell you the stats also. 
But what God is looking for are those that will give themselves. Not to what everyone is saying. Not running from Billy to Jack. Not running from post to post. But to sit with the Most High. To spend time in the Word like we've never spent time in the Word before. To pray like we've never prayed before. And I got something over the last couple of days. And I know we were over at Brother Copeland and... It wasn't anything that I got there, but it was just things that were stirred in me. You know, this week, like what I said, has been the battle is the Lord's, the praisers. Just something, something so powerful, something so simple, just the praisers. And the Lord gave the victory. I want you to lift your hand up and say, and the Lord gave the victory. What if we just got back to the stage where we just praised and 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 praised praised. because we've become so proficient and so polished in so many areas. But what if we just get up in the morning and just praised him for an hour? Just praise you, Lord. Just walk about your, your living room. I praise you. I praise you. Amen. I praise you. I praise you. Any praisers in this room? They say, oh, pastor, this is a wild session today. Oh, this is nothing. Yeah, I feel fire in my belly. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, the devil's on the run in the name of Jesus. He is shaken. He is quickening in his boots. Amen. He wished he could have stopped you years ago, but he couldn't stop you years ago. And Shannon, you haven't seen anything yet. In the name of Jesus. He said that you delight yourself in the Lord. He will cause you to ride in the high places of the earth. Get ready in the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody. Let's celebrate right now. Come on. I declare it. There is no, are no disappointments in God. For they that trust the Lord will never be disappointed. Amen. Greater things are yet to come. Greater things are right up ahead of us. In the name of Jesus. Shut it out. I believe. Great things are manifesting in my life. He said to the Lord this morning, I said, Lord, I seem to just go in and stir them up, stir them up. Yes, stir them up again today. Do you know what I've realized? Death and life is in the power of the tongue. You know what I've realized in my own life? That I've been too quiet at times. Thoughts, stuff, coming here, coming there, things coming out. Unless you open your mouth, nothing happens. I'm going to say it again. Unless you open your mouth, nothing happens. You just stay there as a mental mess. Swapping out thoughts. Swapping out mindsets. Swapping out strongholds. The moment you open your mouth, look at your neighbor and say, get ready. I'm about to open my mouth. Amen. I'm telling you, the moment you begin to open your mouth and you begin to praise the Lord and begin to declare the word of the Lord and you get your prophecies out, the word of the Lord to you and what the word of the Lord said to you, to us. What did Paul say to Timothy? When the enemy comes against you, grab yourself a cup of tea and a couple of fairy cakes and just sit there and listen to the trash the devil wants to feed you. Put on the coffee, make a real tall pot because me and the devil's going to have it today, a long chat. You weren't called to talk to the devil. The only thing he should hear from you is I rebuke you. I resist you. Flee from me. Go from me. Don't sit and have it. I'm telling you something, Mr. Devil. I'm telling you blankety, blankety, blank. I'm telling you. I had a man say to me one time, he says, Pastor, the only time I cuss is when I am rebuking the devil. (laughs) Because he understands that language. (laughs) I 
I'm telling you. <laughs> I thought I might have tried it out. <laughs> Come on, lift your hands. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. My God, he came to me and he said in the mountains, I am Jehovah Shammah. He said, I am in you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus said in Matthew 28, before he left and ascended on high, he said, I am with you always. Look at your neighbor and say always. In the name of Jesus. We're not down here with some type of Casper the ghost you know, floating about our shoulder you know. Uh, hi, Holy Ghost. Hi, uh, no. The Holy Ghost is God. I'm Boston Nephaniah. He is God, the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. And he is not only with me, he is in me. He resides within me. I am not on my own. In the name of Jesus. And I don't care. I'm I'm telling you, and I mean this respectfully. I mean, I told somebody recently, I said, we have lots of earthquakes in Oklahoma. Lots of them. But now an earthquake hit New York. Ooh. They evacuated the White House. Ooh. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Scripture says the Holy Spirit will show you. Who will He show? Me. I'm going to ask you one. I'm going to ask this section right here. Who will He show? Me. Lift your hands. And receive this right now. He said, "When you sit in darkness, He will be your darkness." No. What did He say? Light. When you sit in darkness, He will be your light. light. Everybody say, "Light be." Light be. Come on, isn't this good today? Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him, I've got my head screwed on right in the name of Jesus. I am not looking around for sensationalism. I am not looking around for, for the next juicy little bit of woo, 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 woo. Do you know there's trillions of bugs that are about to be released on the earth? Do you know that there's trillions of angels that are being released on the earth? My God, stuff your bugs. He said, we'll be held responsible for every idle word. And the enemy has us dancing and talking about all the, oh, there's bugs coming. Oh, there's bugs coming. There's bugs coming. Oh, oh, do you have any bugs? Do you have bugs? How many bugs did you have today? Man, I'm telling you, bugs, there's more bugs this year than there were last year. That's because they were lying dormant in the underground. And I'm telling you, the earth is shaking and they're shaking the bugs loose. I could get a YouTube channel going right now. I buy bugs. The bugs move. Jesus is coming. No, oh, you didn't hear what I said. Jesus is coming. Come on, go try it one more time. Jesus is coming. When the plagues were coming against Egypt, God did not tell the Israelites to watch it. Watch out for that bug. What did he tell them to do? What did he tell them to do? What did he tell the Israelites to do? Nothing with the bugs. Something with the blood. What's wrong with you? Sit over there. <laughs> he told them to apply the blood. Lift your hands and say, that's what I'm doing right now in the name of Jesus. I am applying the blood. I am applying the blood. I'm speaking the name that is above every name in the name of Jesus. He comes to me in the mountains and he says, I'm Jehovah Shammah. I am with you and I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And I'm telling you, it was a refreshing. 
And he has been coming to me and reminding me that I am El Shaddai. Everybody shout it out, El Shaddai. <laughs> Pastor, you sound like a wild man today. What's wrong with you? I'm just feeling very end timeish. I don't know what an end time each person looks like. You've heard of Amish, I'm end timeish. And I don't know what that looks like. Somebody says we should be prepping. Somebody said we should be we should be buying powder for under the stairs. We should be doing stuff. I, I don't I don't I I don't know what all to do. Because for years they told us not to do anything. Because the rapture was coming, Jesus was coming, and now, now they're telling us, run for the hills. <laughs> but what does God say? What does the spirit within you say? If the spirit within you is saying, pack up the understairs with powder so that you can stay alive, then I'm telling you, obviously, you're not going in the rapture. You'll be here. You'll need all that powdered food. But how many people's going in the rapture? Let me see your hands. Now, if you're a prepper, don't get offended at me. I'll just come and eat at your house. Just put me on your invitations. I believe there's wisdom. I believe there's wisdom in all of it. I believe there's wisdom to prepare. The Spirit of God said to Pastor Karn years ago, prepare to stay and prepare to go. That means having a little stash of cash. That means, you know, uh, having a little bit of, you know, stash of food. But we should be prepared for anything, prepared for a storm, prepared for anything. Put back bottles of water, prepared for anything, right? Nobody saw COVID coming. It's going quiet in here. Maybe somebody's going to have, Jill, you're going to have to take over. <laughs> Lift your hands with me right now and say, I'm getting my head screwed on right. I take authority over the show in the name of Jesus. I take authority over, amen, voices, 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 voices. In the name of Jesus, too many voices gives you too many choices. So Psalm 91 verse 1 says this, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain. Everybody say remain. Let me hear you say it. Remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I lean and rely, and in Him I confidently trust. For then He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Then He will cover you with His pinions, and under His wings shall you trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. Everybody doing okay? Everybody glad you came to church? Verse 5, you shall not be afraid. Lift your hand and receive this right now. I shall not be afraid of the terror of the night nor of the arrow, the evil plots, and the slanders of the wicked that flies by day. Do you know that Delta Airlines have made it available for people to buy tickets to get on a plane tomorrow night and fly and w tomorrow day, whatever it is, and watch the eclipse? <laughs> and end up in Detroit at 4 o'clock. Wow. There's a day coming where we're going to have the greatest show of the galaxies, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care if I see tomorrow's eclipse. We're going to rule and reign with him through the millennial reign of Christ. And there is going to be interplanetary action in the name of Jesus. You can slap yourself happy over an eclipse all you want. Enjoy it. But I'm telling you. There is more to come in the days to come. Greater things, shut it out, greater things. Oh, I'm tired of this message today. I'm not. I'm telling you. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. But look what it says here. 
This word dwelleth in Hebrew is yeshab. It means to sit down, to dwell, to remain, to settle in the sense of taking up a homestead. Or I love this, staking a claim. And this is one of the points that I'm to bring you today, that it is time for you to stake your claim. I want you to take your pen. I want you to write it down. Somewhere in there in Psalm 91, put a highlight on your Bible, uh, on your device, that this word dwelleth is to stake your claim and to resist claim jumpers. Resist claim jumpers. Now we're going into this tonight again. I can hardly wait. Claim jumpers. Now just in case somebody doesn't know what a claim jumper is, I took the time to look at that for you. So if you stake a claim to something, you say or show that you have a right to it and that it should belong to you. And he says here, you mark it on the map. I want you to lift your hand and say, I'm about to mark some things on a map and I'm about to stake my claim. Wave your hand at me if you believe you have believer's rights. Come on, everybody. I, I, you may be visiting today and you may not know what that is, but I'm telling you, if you stay around here, you will learn that. Shut it out. It is time to stake my claim. This building. The prayer meeting, one of the prayer meetings right at the beginning, we oiled them up. It hangs in my office. We oiled the map, and as we were oiling the map and praying over the map, we saw in the center of Tulsa an X. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to us, X marks the spot. We did not know that this building sat at the X. Listen, 41st and Sheridan, I mean, I, I, have no, I have no real preference of where... I don't think 41st and Sheridan would have been, I mean, I'd like a big field somewhere, maybe lots of acres. I believe we will have that. Amen. But, but I, I wouldn't have said that 41st and Sheridan, I mean, I could have looked to other places. But when the Lord marks something on a map, yes. then you stake your claim. Yes. <laughs> now look at this. What's a claim jumper? You all doing okay? This is a wild session, isn't it? Praise the Lord. A claim jumper attempts to seize your land or claims or tries to claim what another party has already claimed. You know why Satan hated the faith bounce so much? It's because we name things and we claim things. And Satan hates it because we set laws in motion. We lay claim to things. You know, this building, even though, you know, we have to get everybody in somewhere. My goodness, it was like, so we tried, you know, to get the warehouse and broken arm and stuff like this. But when you come up, it was nearly embarrassing. I was telling somebody about this at the weekend. It was nearly embarrassing because when you come up here and the dust was blowing, all you could see over the doors of this building were crosses that were anointed with oil. And the dust would stick to it. And so if you come up and you looked at the doors, you would have seen these finger crosses with people claiming this property. Do you know, I was talking to somebody at fellowship after the meeting uh, the other night at Brother Keith's uh, when Brother Copeland was speaking. And this person sat down beside, we were there with Perry and, Mar uh, Perry and Brenda Hart and Perry will be with us. Per Perry and Brenda will be with us next, next Sunday. You don't want to miss that. And we're sitting there and they had a friend who ministers in Bristol. And we all got talking. And before you know it, she says, well, where is your church? And I said, it's up on the 44. She said, it's not, it's not the old Masonic building, is it? And I said, that's it. She says, oh my goodness. And I'm telling you, our table went off, did it or did it not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our table went off and she said, when I was five, age five, we would pass this building and I would tell my mother, one day, that's going to be a church. 
Do you know it was only last week that her mother said to her before she went to this meeting to meet us, she didn't know she was going to meet us. Her mother only told her last week. Do you know that building that you used to speak to, that Masonic building that you used to speak to when we passed it when you were five, that was going to be a church? It's now a church. <laughs> Some of you are like, no, well, it doesn't matter. Listen, out of the mouth of babes, thy hast ordained praise. And she was like, oh my goodness, you're the people. <laughs> Imagine out of a mouth of a five-year-old wow. yeah. to a God, yeah. to people in Ireland. Yeah. And we meet her on Saturday night and she's able to tell me and I had just said things to the Lord just a few hours earlier about certain things. And the Lord sweeps in. He says, before I knew you, I formed you. Oh, lift your hands and worship him. Before I knew you, I formed you. Shut it out, I believe he has a plan for me. Oh, and I give him praise and honor and glory. Come on, everybody. So I want you to say this with me right now. I stake my claim in the name of Jesus right now. So he said, he that dwells in the secret place, amen, or to create a homestead, to stake a claim, to resist claim jumpers, or to possess a place to live. This secret place in the Hebrew is kether, C-E-T-H-E-R. It means a covering. It means a hiding place. And then it leads you right up into the shadow of the Almighty. This explains the secret place of the Most High under the shadow. I guess if you're getting a shadow, you're close to the one who's creating it. Look at your neighbor and say, you're in good proximity right now in the name of Jesus. He said this, under the shadow, what is this? Defense and protection. Everybody say that with me right now. Defense and protection. We are under the defense and the protection of the Almighty One. He will keep me safe. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. What will he do? He will be a refuge and my hiding place. He will be my fortress, my place of protection. He is my God who is true and he is faithful. And he is my place of trust and he is my place of security. It didn't go to say, when, when the fight against you is not too strong, then I will be able to deliver you. No, he brings the word surely. Look at your neighbor and say, surely. Oh. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. I want you to underline and highlight that word fowler. And I want you to do a personal study on that because this is what the enemy is working at right now. Snares. Snares. He wants to set snares. He's a trapper. He wants to trap you. He wants to set snares. He wants to set nooses. Nooses for you to be caught. Well, I have a word for the enemy. Not that I'm talking to him, but if he's listening, I'm declaring right now that I am delivered from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence in the name of Jesus. What is, would you hear this? What is noisome pestilence in, 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 in Bible English? It is evil, it is hurtful, it is offensive, and it is loathsome. 
It also brings you to the Hebrew word haba, and it means mischief or calamity. Well, I declare it in the name of Jesus that I refuse all mischief and I refuse all calamity. I refuse all evil. I refuse all hurt. I refuse all offense. And I refuse that which is loathsome. If you receive that with me, lift up your hands and say, I take it right now in the name of Jesus. Now, I'm telling you, when, when we pray Psalm 91, it is just not a case of you just getting Psalm 91 out and just, you know, just becoming religious with it, like it's just some type of confession. When you get into it and you break it down and you realize that El Shaddai is your covering, that El Shaddai is watching over you, what El Shaddai has become to you, what El Shaddai can do for you, what El Shaddai is working out on your behalf, everything begins to change. Look at three people and say, get ready, things are about to change. When you sit there quiet, when you sit there quiet, I got to let you go home. I, I know. Oh, it's only 1130. Uh, how many people give me five more minutes? Come on. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler, right? He will deliver me from the snare of the fowler. He will deliver me from this, uh, no, some pestilence. He will cover me with his feathers. He will protect me under his wings. And he will make truth a shield and a buckler. Yeah. So no matter what's going on in my world, no matter how much deception is going on in my world, I will know the truth. Yes. I'm going to say it again. No matter what's going on, no matter what swirls are going on, no matter what twist is going on, do you know what I've been taking authority over? Spirits of wickedness. From a root word wicker. Twisted. Twisted. Twisted spirits coming to work at you, to twist it. Hearing things that people say, but hearing it wrong. We can sit in church and even hear this message and hear it wrong. Like you hear this message like, you know, it's, it's irritating you. That's a spirit, that's a devil that is sitting too high up on your shoulder working at you. You don't need this. I mean, he's just, he's just a fiery Irish, you know, whatever. And he just needs to go, go back and settle down. No. 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 We got to stir it up, Alan. Do you think the buddy and Miss Pot give everything that they give? in such a powerful apostolic work. And so there's, 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 there's seed all over the city of apostolic works, tremendous, powerful apostolic works. And then God slots us all in years later and said, it is time for another apostolic work. And people are trying to make sense out of what is an apostolic work. And I don't even know what, I, I listen to what some people are saying, but I don't even believe we know yet what an apostolic work is. But what we're doing is that we're working our way through this end time period, and we are becoming what we need to be. I'm going to try this section right now. We are becoming. What does an end time businessman look like? I believe it's different than an, an early time businessman. God is going to give us wisdom in every area of our lives in the name of Jesus. I, I know, I know Reese Howells prayed in such a way during the, the war regarding Hitler and all, and that was that. There was a grace. There was something that happened. Do you know there's a grace on us now so that we can pray out these days? so that we can work through these days and you have to push into that grace. What am I doing every day of my life? Pushing into the grace. That's why I don't get tired doing this. That's why I'm not looking for something new. That's why I'm not tired with it. I'm tired with millennial. Oh my God, it's time to get something new. Because when you push into that grace, he meets you there. Hallelujah. The snare of the fowler, ladies and gentlemen, the snare which wicked men, fallen angels, and demons set for the righteous. 
Psalm 18, verse 5, the cords of Sheol, the place of the dead, surrounded me, the snares of death confronted me and came upon me. These things want to upset your world. Yeah. I'm not talking about you being a preacher. I'm not even talking about you being in the fivefold. I'm just talking about you getting through life. There are things out there that do not want you to make it. Spirits of wickedness, spirits of destruction. You heard a faith message somewhere and you latched onto it. And you says, my, it's true. There's a better life for all of us. We're going for this better life. How many people made that adjustment? We're going for it. Then, you know, you got with people and, you know, people being people. How many people knows what I mean by that statement? People being people and we're all in there. Somebody said, well, you know, if it wasn't for people, I would do good. But the thing is, it's all about people. It's all about people. Let me wrap this up. And we'll get into tonight. Did you get into the night of this today? Come on, shut it out. Fires are burning right now in the name of Jesus. Fires are burning brightly in the name of Jesus. All you have to do is re return. That's what Joel said, return. Return to the reason why. Return to the reason why. Return to the reason why. He said this, nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction and sudden death that surprise and lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me. Only a spectator shall I be, myself inaccessible in the secret place of the Most High, as I witness the reward of the wicked. These wicked spirits want you to walk in a reward of destruction. You give your life for the kingdom. You give years for the kingdom. Look what it's done. Look where you are. Look, look, it never did it. You tied, you gave, you this, you that. Always living out of the sourness of disappointment. Yet if we really sat in the presence of God and began to remember that God was with us there. He was with us there. He was with me there. He was with me there. Oh, I remember that. It's those little things. I remember when he, he had someone buy me lunch here. I remember when he had somebody do this for me. I remember when somebody put gas in my car there. I remember when I was going away somewhere, somebody sent me money for a meal. I remember when somebody did this. I remember, look at your neighbor and say, it's time to remember. It's time to remember what the enemy wants to do is to get people living out of the bitterness, of the sourness of discontent and disappointment. We lose and disengage from the place of the Most High. We lose, lose ourselves and disengage from that place of protection and defense. We lose and disengage, amen, from the very things that got us started, that hope, that faith, that blueprint that we saw by the eye of faith. We believed that things could be better. Now we're further down the road and we ain't seen nothing and yet how long is it going to be well look I'm telling you look at Jacob I mentioned it just a few days ago look at Jacob I mean look how he was literally betrayed by his father-in-law a family member to be look at your neighbor and say there's hope for me seven years in Laban betrayed him Jacob was working for Rachel. She was beautiful. And if you, if you read this in context, you'll see El Shaddai is working in there. Almighty God is working in there, right there in that story. What Jacob could have done after seven years when he went into the tent that night and he thought he was getting Rachel. When he woke up in the morning, there's something fishy about it, but when he woke up in the morning, he realized it was Leah. I still can't get my head around that. <laughs> How you would not know that you, that, that, you, that you weren't with the one you thought you were with. I mean, it's just, I mean it must have been, there must have been an eclipse. <laughs> I mean, it must have just been so dark that, that 
you know, because from what we can tell, Leah didn't look like, what do you call her? Leah. Or Leah, whatever way. She didn't look like Rachel. She wasn't gifted like Rachel, you know. So I think if you'd have felt hair on the lip, you would have realized. <laughs> Everybody needed a laugh, all right? Everybody needed a laugh. Glory to God, we're going to laugh our way to victory. I feel a belly brim moment coming on. I mean, I just, I still can't get, I just can't get my, I, every time I read it, I think. Ooh. There must have been, I mean, there must have been some bad wine. Real bad wine, real something bad. There's something bad happened. That Leah didn't even, I mean, surely she knew she wasn't Rachel. I mean, so much for sisterly love. I mean, I mean, I mean a whole stack of stuff in there. A whole stack of stuff. And so Jacob, I mean, for, for many of us, if that had happened here in your business or here at Millennial, we'd have been out the, we'd have been out the door. You think I'm going to work for you for another seven years? You, you must be joking, joker. But what did Jacob do? They're all right. If you promise to give me Rachel. Wait a minute. This is like deja vu. We've done this before. We've danced this song before. But here he goes again. If you give me Rachel, I'll stay. But El Shaddai had a plan. And he told Jacob that if you will do exactly as I tell you to do, you will not be disappointed. And we'll unhook there, and we will go into this later today. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands, pray in the spirit with me right now. The truth of the matter was, Jacob was not disappointed. And he was tremendously benefited and made tremendously wealthy. It doesn't matter what man does to you, Senator. I don't know what it's like up on the floor every, every week, day in, day out. We applaud you. Can we just bless this man today in the name of Jesus? I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like. I, I, I don't get up in your shoes. I don't go to that floor. But what I do know is that when the Lord asks you to do something, he gives you everything that you need to do it. And we want you to know you're not on that floor on your own. In the name of Jesus, how many people believe that today? Guys, El Shaddai is at work. There's a fire that is at work. <coughs> There's a well in the city that's bubbling and has to blow. You just have to go around America in the church world, and when you mention Tulsa, no one really lifts up a shout of joy. They let out a bit of a yeek and a Ugh. Even the prophets call Tulsa an elephant's graveyard. But God goes to work. And he takes one from here and one from there. And he takes one from here and one from there. One from here and one from there. Two from here and three from there. And he begins to start amassing. Yes. 
because there may have been a period of time that this was an elephant's graveyard, but it's not an elephant's graveyard. No. It's a city of destiny. Pray in the spirit with me right now. Pray. I sense the spirit of prayer. Menzila prapadosolomonzaleta prapadosu. You see, we're just not here building a church. We're here working at something greater. This is not about Pastor Paul and Pastor Karen. If anybody tells you that, you, you, you just lovingly just say, you have missed the plot. Pray in the spirit now. Come on. You can listen to me and pray at the same time. What did the prayers of old see? What did they see? What truly did Jenny, Jeannie Wilkerson see? I know we have stuff recorded, but there was things that was prayed out that was never recorded. Things that were prayed out that were only recorded in the Spirit. They were only set out in the Spirit. I've said it for years. The moment that Tulsa falls, other things will fall. This city has become a prize for the devil because of the great, great things that happened in this city. And I mean it with all the respect in the world. It wouldn't matter how many people came and prophesied whatever they had to prophesy. Unless someone gets up and does something about it. It will just be another long line of prophecies. There are certain places that are ordained on the earth people just think these things happen anywhere. They don't, ladies and gentlemen. There are ordained places on the earth. How many people understand that? And I I know it's a Sunday morning and we're like, my God, you know, what's he doing? I'm setting this up for success because I'm not going to let up and loose my hand on what I know is within grasp. I pray today that you keep praying. I pray today that you keep worshiping. I pray today that you keep singing, that you keep shouting, that you keep praising. And not just when we come together, but in your homes, in your living rooms, in your kitchens, in your bedrooms, you lift up a shout. You pray for myself and Pastor Karn, pray for this leadership, pray for this work, pray for the prayers, pray for people that are here, pray for each other. It's amazing, you know, when, when Peter said, after the Lord said, who do people say I am? And he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he says, and I know others said it too, but he said, Peter, flesh and blood didn't reveal this, but my father revealed this to you. I think it's just amazing that one of the things that the Lord said to, the Peter, bef- to Peter before the Lord ascended, he said this. He says that when you've returned, Peter, strengthen and establish the brethren. Do you know what's happening, guys? A strengthening and an establishing. You know, there's many times, sir, I don't understand what's going on. But I'm not going to sit there, Joel, and talk about it. Margie, I'm not going to sit there and say, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Because I've learned over all these years that if I don't know right now, if I hold my place in El Shaddai, and natural things are not in my favor. <laughs> For Jacob, natural things were not in his favor. For Abraham, 
Natural things were not in his favor. 99 and 89 having a baby. I mean, natural things were not in his favor. But you see, that's where El Shaddai steps in. You have Elohim, the God of natural, and El Shaddai, the God, the Almighty God, the many-breasted one, the one who is self-sufficient, the one who supplies. I was just thinking our, our little granddaughter, it's hard to believe, now she's six months old. And she's growing, growing. She doesn't have legs at the minute. She just has these rolls and, and a foot stuck on the end. And she hasn't had anything other than the nursing of her mother. I was meditating on the Lord. I said, look how healthy she is. And all she's receiving is the sufficiency from the breast of her mother. It's an amazing thing. And then we have El Shaddai, Almighty God, the many-breasted one. Sufficiency. And we don't need anything else at this time in our lives other than his supply. So there's some things in our lives, ladies and gentlemen, that naturally don't look like they're working. Naturally, they don't think that they don't look like they're going in the right direction. And naturally, it could look like, like Jacob, you've been betrayed. But I'm telling you, you stick with God. And you stick with his plan. And I'm telling you, you will see the reward of the wicked coming into your hands. Lift your hands all over this room. Begin to bless him and thank him for it right now. <clears throat> Audibly lift your voices. I know I've spoken long today, but I believe it was needed. I believe it's necessary. Because if the enemy wants to harp on in the ears of the saints, then I'm telling you, then God's going to do more than that. And he's going to keep speaking and speaking and speaking. It is well with my soul. Greater yet has still to come. In the name of Jesus, we ain't seen nothing yet. In Jesus' precious name, come on, bless him right now. Amen. In our businesses, we haven't seen anything yet. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. In our businesses, in our ministries, we haven't seen anything yet. We haven't seen anything yet. Come on, help me. Help me pray. We haven't seen anything yet. 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 For they that sowed in tears, you didn't give 13 years to Russia so that you could just retire back home to the United States of America. My goodness, when you got back here, God put you on the front line. And even though you're maybe not doing everything that you thought you could be doing or should be doing, I hear it in my spirit. God put you on the front line. And that's why sometimes you take a head here and you take a head there, but you're still standing. You're still going. You're still growing. And God knows you're of the stock, that you're not going to stop. You're not going to lie down and you're not going to roll over and you're not going to give up because you wouldn't give the devil the pleasure of watching you in the name of Jesus. So we speak strength to you today in the name of Jesus. Strength. Come on, everybody. Strength, strength, strength in the name of Jesus. Strength, strength in Jesus' name. They're telling us that they were inspecting all the monuments at the Capitol, make sure everything was fine. But it's not the monuments for me. I don't mean that disrespectful. It's not truly really the foundations of a country for me. 
It's the foundations of the church. Because if we have the foundations of the church intact, and we have that which has been built upon the foundation, the cornerstone, intact. It's the building of the spiritual that we need to concern ourselves with, not the natural. Because some of these memorials, they point to what man did. But we have to keep pointing to what God is doing. In the name of Jesus, if you believe that the greatest days of America are right up ahead, shout a big amen. Come on, shout it one more time, amen. I believe it with all my heart. When we sang that, Christ is my foundation, can we sing it as we go home today? And you get to that, he won't, you won't. I want you to make a declaration. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. 